A recent study by intellectual property firm Appleyard Lees found that makers of electric vehicles are increasingly choosing solid-state batteries over lithium-ion batteries. According to the second annual edition of the Inside Green Innovation Progress Report 2022, patent filings for lithium-ion battery technology are declining, while those for solid-state innovation are rapidly rising, primarily due to Japanese car and electronics firms. Toyota holds the most patents for solid-state battery technology, and the company plans to introduce its first electric vehicle component powered by a solid-state battery in 2025. In addition, Toyota just recently filed a new patent for another solid-state battery, which its research team accidentally created. Will this be the next holy grail of batteries? How does it differ from the traditional solid-state battery? Let's find out. High-end technology, including wearables, pacemakers, radio frequency identification systems, and electric and hybrid cars, all rely on high-voltage solid-state lithium-ion batteries as their primary power source. One of their most dramatic downsides is that they frequently blow up when damaged. A new composite material, safer to employ in these batteries than conventional solid polymer electrolyte, SPE, technologies, was accidentally produced by Toyota's research team as they worked to create the safest and most efficient battery possible. The novel composite material from Toyota, which has a patent pending, has various advantages over conventional SPE materials. The voltage range is quite substantial. Ionic conductivity is optimal even at temperatures as high as 330 degrees Celsius, and it exhibits outstanding thermal stability. The level of safety is significantly increased because it shows stability against cell damage. The Toyota team cited further disadvantages of conventional SPE materials. Due to their low thermal stability, batteries may experience thermal runaway, which could result in catastrophic fire. Their reduced ionic conductivity at low temperatures can affect longevity and energy efficiency. Also, given the limited space for a battery in electronics or electric cars, low-energy density batteries can result in quick energy depletion and short operational durations. To address this, Toyota developed new electrolytes containing fire-retardant molecules as a quasi-solid-state battery. Through nail penetration and thermal abuse testing, battery overcharging, electrolyte composite optimization, and battery optimization, the research team has continued to investigate ways to make the material even safer. Likewise, Toyota is also making progress in using sulfur and silicon as building blocks for solid-state batteries. Let's check out the progress and how this compares to other batteries. One area of interest for Toyota's research initiative is a new generation of lithium sulfur batteries. The project team is focused on developing prototype sulfur-based cells with large storage capacity that are light and inexpensive. The sulfur-based approach may allow for the creation of extremely light and affordable batteries because of its high storage capacity and low material costs. It is also anticipated that using silicon as the anode material will greatly lengthen the cycle life of the battery cells. In February 2023, the project got underway. Due to their high energy density and stability, solid-state batteries based on sulfide are seen as a potential replacement for today's lithium-ion batteries. These batteries promise longer range and more safety when used in electric vehicles. Particular promise can be seen in the use of sulfur as the cathode active material. Sulfur achieves extraordinarily high energy densities in solid-state batteries because it is devoid of crucial lithium-ion technology components such as cobalt and nickel. However, the anode presents significant difficulties in battery production and function. Metallic lithium is being studied for use as negative electrodes in solid-state batteries. But lithium's strong reactivity places restrictions on such cell system stability and safety. Toyota's research team is thus concentrating on silicon as the anode material, which has also shown potential in current scientific research for solid-state batteries. A novel cell design that combines low material prices and high energy density should be possible by combining silicon, sulfur or lithium sulfide, a solid electrolyte, and sulfur. For the team to be successful, they must overcome challenges with sulfides, particularly dendrites. A lithium metal battery cell's anode can produce dendrites, which are root-like structures made of pure lithium. As they expand, they rip the cell apart from the inside, producing a short circuit and battery failure when they reach the cathode. Even in lithium-ion battery cells from the past, dendrites can grow and cause fires or even explosions. A cell using a sulfide-based separator can try a number of compromises to get past this issue. One approach is to use a silicon or graphite anode instead of lithium metal, since the lithium metal anode is what generates the improvements. 
However, using a silicon or graphite anode instead reduces the benefits over older lithium-ion technology in terms of driving range, cost, and charge time. This strategy is used by several other solid-state businesses. For instance, Solid Power revealed a new silicon anode pilot line a few months after it published data showing that its cells were unable to maintain acceptable rates of power using pure lithium metal anodes without high temperatures. A silver-infused, carbon-based anode, which is too expensive for practical use, was also used by Samsung in published results. If subjected to extreme pressure, sulfide-based separator batteries may seem to perform respectably. Samsung, for instance, tested its sulfide-based separator batteries at pressures between 20 and 40 atmospheres. Solid Power reported testing between 70 and 90 atmospheres, and Harvard's lab recently published test results with a sulfide separator at pressures above 750 atmospheres, the pressure nearly 5 miles under the sea, more than enough to crush a nuclear submarine. Anything beyond 10 atmospheres is probably impossible in an EV battery pack. While pressure at that magnitude might be feasible in a lab, it is not practical for real-world use. Work at high temperatures is another approach. Lithium softens at high temperatures, which reduces dendrite formation. But keeping the battery hot burns energy, shortens battery life, and requires sophisticated, expensive thermal management systems. Another strategy is to run the battery at low power. Low power operation reduces dendrite formation risk, but to compete with combustion engine vehicles, EVs must charge quickly, which is impossible when battery power is limited. For most solid-state batteries, the inability to quickly charge is their fatal flaw. Instability is another issue. The volatility of the compounds themselves poses problems. Sulfites, for example, even if they stop lithium dendrite growth, still react with the metal, clogging the anode with waste chemicals that reduce power output and shorten battery life. The instability of sulfides will likely reduce their appeal for passenger EVs, where drivers highly value lifespan and power. In addition to reacting with pure lithium, sulfides can also react with substances commonly found in the cathode, such as nickel-rich battery materials used in high-performance EVs, at high temperatures, which reduces dendrite formation. But keeping the battery hot burns energy, shortens battery life, and requires sophisticated, expensive thermal management systems. Another strategy is to run the battery at low power. Low power operation reduces dendrite formation risk, but to compete with combustion engine vehicles, EVs must charge quickly, which is impossible when battery power is limited. For most solid-state batteries, the inability to quickly charge is their fatal flaw. Instability is another issue. The volatility of the compounds themselves poses problems. Sulfites, for example, even if they stop lithium dendrite growth, still react with the metal, clogging the anode with waste chemicals that reduce power output and shorten battery life.